feds is on them. You know what I mean? Government ain't want you to be organized. Nah, they want you scrimping and scraping and killing each other on the corner on some bullshit. You know what I mean? That's why me and Prop Joe, we're getting ready to put this co-op together. Different crews, one package. Best dope, best coke. Share, share, like. George Stone III was born May 11, 1994 in Louisville, Kentucky. Initially, he grew up in the Clarksdale projects before they were torn down, forcing his family to move to the 5500 block on Riata Drive. This side of town is known as Newburgh, and although in the past it was considered the calmer side of town, over the years it would earn an entirely new reputation. Growing up, George was mostly sheltered from the street culture. He attended an all-boys school called St. Xavier High. He always had an interest in sports and turned out to be an exceptional football player. While playing football as a freshman, George would meet Jeremiah Neal, who was also known as YOG Peso. Peso would take him under his wing and become a mentor for him. Peso was a senior while George was a freshman, and both were looked at as the two star players on the team. The two would become very close over the years. It's important to take note of this now because their friendship would later start a war in the city. The school they attended cost tuition, so it was always his goal to get a scholarship playing football so he could get a free ride through college later. As his high school years came to an end, his dedication as a linebacker paid off. He got multiple letters of interest from different Division I programs. Initially, he attended Indiana State for an entire year, but then he transferred to Sacramento City College. He was quickly making a name for himself, and even more offers started pouring in from even better schools. He transferred once again to Stephen F. Austin University in Texas. It was here that he played his best season yet, totaling over 111 tackles, giving him a possible chance of playing in the NFL. Unfortunately, this excitement was short-lived, and he went undrafted by any teams. Now he was at a crossroad in his life. Until this point, the only thing he saw himself doing was playing ball. Now he had to rethink everything. Football, you know what I'm saying? That was good, you know what I'm saying? Like, but you know how it goes sometimes in your life. You, you go somewhere for one thing, you know what I'm saying? It might lead to another thing, you know what I'm saying? It's hard, it's hard to avoid stuff that's right in your face all the time. While in school, he met a lot of people some of which had ties in the streets and were making serious money across the states. At this point, George had one goal only, make money. He started working with some people that he met making deliveries state to state and the money started coming in. But with the money also came the risk. On one of his trips, he was pulled over and taken into custody. Now he was facing a potential of 10 years. Prior to this point, his family had no idea who was involved in this and thought he was still focused on football. Little did they know he was making money and had no intentions of ever going back. Luckily for him, he was bailed out by no other than YOG Peso, his old football mentor from high school. And because he had stacked some money away, he was able to pay for a good lawyer who only got him 5 months behind bars. He and Peso would reunite after his release and once again, Peso offered to mentor him. This time, he wanted him to rap and this would birth the career of ESTG. But this was deeper than music because Peso and G were actually bringing the west end of the city and Newburgh together by doing this. On the west end you had YOG Peso and rappers like H Block Duke and now Newburgh had ESTG. With the support of both sides, ESTG's music was catching on immediately and he was gaining a buzz fast. Some of his singles were already touching the million view range, but the truce between the west end and Newburgh was about to come crashing down. Recent. Success, I don't know if that's what you want to call it. It's just a lot of stuff that came with it that I wasn't really ready for, but I had to get ready for, you know what I'm saying? And that's just what's going on right now. It's a lot of people, you know what I'm saying, who who, who used to support it, they ain't supporting it no more. On July 8, 2019, ESTG, his crew, and the guys from the West End were all in the studio. It was just like any other day and things seemed to be normal. But while ESTG was in the booth putting down a verse, an argument between his crew and a guy from the West End started. Things escalated quickly and they took it outside as a fight broke out. Moments later, a gunshot went off and took the life of a man named Big O from the West End. Big O was a well-respected member and although Peso and G initially brought everyone together, in an instant none of that mattered. Now it was war. This included Peso and G. Although they were childhood friends, they both now had to stand behind their crews. 
Over the coming months, ESTG would drop his first two mixtapes, El Toro and Die Bloody, which would both bring his name across the country. With this type of momentum, he was catching the attention of other rappers who now wanted to work. Sada Baby from Detroit would link up with the STG for their song Taught Different. He flew down to Louisville to shoot a video and everything was going well. But as everyone was getting ready to leave the scene, a car pulled up, letting off rounds and hitting ESTG five times in his stomach, chest and face. After an extensive surgery, he survived and was right back in the streets and in the studio. He would later rap about the entire incident in his song Nathaniel Forrest. His career was on the rise, but the war was only getting worse in Louisville. This is where the story gets crazy. Shooting and killing a three-year-old girl and her father less than a year ago, and this morning he's out of jail. On August 14, 2020, a man from the West End named Brandon Waddles was driving his car with his three-year-old daughter. Brandon was also an up-and-coming rapper and went by the name The Real Lil B. He and his daughter were driving through the west side neighborhood of Jacobs when a man named Kevon Lawless from ESDG sides allegedly pulled up letting off shots. Unfortunately, Brandon and his daughter would pass away on the scene. Kevon Lawless would take the charge, but nobody knew he had ties to ESTG. But Kevon was then bonded out for $300,000 by an A&R at Atlantic Records named Nigel Talley. As the news spread about this, people began connecting the dots as Nigel used to be a producer for ESTG. At this point, the Louisville police were also catching on to the war between Newburgh and the West End, and they were making plans to intervene. The West End wasted no time getting revenge for Brandon. On October 2nd, 2020, one of ESTG's closest friends, Austin Floyd, was visiting the West End and 36th Street when he was gunned down. This was obviously a huge deal for G, as he was his right-hand man and appeared in many of his music videos. Weeks later, on October 23rd, Regional Johnson from the West End was driving down Highland Road when he too was shot and killed. At this point, the West End and Newburgh were trading body for body to the point of no return. Both sides clicked up with other neighborhoods, expanding the war between them. The West End then changed their name to the Wolfpack, but at the same time, his career was only becoming more and more recognized as a rapper. His career was skyrocketing, and he even signed the Yo Gotti CMG label. With this, he collabed with other mainstream rappers like Lil Baby and 42 Doug. His name was reaching new heights, but it was hard for him to celebrate as things back home started to come crashing down. The Louisville Task Force had been watching and monitoring ESTG and his crew for almost a year. Their investigation started after Kevon Lawless was bailed out by the A&R at Atlantic, and everything started to add up for them. On top of it, G had used lyrics in a song where he said free Kevon Lawless, which they used as evidence. Ten people have been indicted as part of a drug trafficking bust. WLKY's Lauren Adams explains how the task force is working to make Louisville streets safe. My raps don't say I'm back knocking this shit. Drinking this shit, I ain't knocking no strip. These lame ass niggas don't shoot no bitch. 5500 don't got no bitch on Instagram giving them police. Although ESTG was not directly tied to any of these incidents, 10 people from his crew were taken into custody. G remained free, but he now had to keep moving without the help of 10 members. Meanwhile, in the West End, rapper H Block Duke started to also gain buzz after releasing his diss track titled EST. This song helped kickstart his career, and now it was two rappers from Louisville bringing the war into hip hop. All of this started from one petty fight in a studio that turned friends to enemies. Had this never happened, it's possible Louisville could have been united and winning together. This ain't no movie like that from getting shot one time. I know. <laughs> like, it's a whole lot of times I could have not been here, but God said I had a, you feel me, I had a purpose. Like, I ain't, I ain't, did, I ain't did what I was supposed to do yet to be able to leave, you feel me? 